Economic Summit sets stage for economic growth, Malaysia Film Workshop Breakthrough, Miss Tulagi Champions Baby Box Initiative, and later in sports, Volleyball Championship Prize presentations postponed in. Hello and welcome. I'm Ursula Nongabatu. A two-day national economic summit brought together key stakeholders from the private sector, state-owned enterprises, development partners and provincial governments. They discussed strategies with the national government to boost economic growth in the Solomon Islands. The summit's outcomes will guide the government in implementing measures and prioritizing resources for sustainable post-pandemic recovery. There seems to be this, this, this thinking that government and we, the policy formulation in also in Bloheim, or, uh, and, and private sector, you implement them. In also, but that, that's not how it should work in any economy. Um, the, the collaboration must 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 uh, must, must, must must continue. I would say. So, the the whole uh, uh, summit is to bring in other experts first of all. People bring in from other experts. Uh, um, you know, I'm with the World Bank, uh, ADB, and what uh, what the bilateral partners play me come. You know, I've got them a lot of studies about Solomon Islands. Every long time, and it's a lot of data and a lot of information about Solomon Islands, which uh, I'm not really uh, guiding the way. Always as a formulating and, and the emphasis of, of development that in, in, in the driving of this country is not really driven by uh, a lot of research that uh, uh, data that they went put out in most So we we invite him again for coming doing presentation and for summarizing the current. Uh, uh, economic uh, uh, situation in the country and for identifying what the primary barriers um, and uh, for him, where why not even grow? And what's so you look at the growth rate of Solomon Islands, oh my what? <laughs> and we same, same, of course, for the last 80 years, yeah, uh, and also, yeah, and uh, so many times. So, of course, we, we bring up some flash points during the, our travel the last 46 years. We get the National Economic Summit is a key part of the government's 100-day policy initiative led by the Ministry of Finance and Treasury and the Ministry of National Planning and Development Coordination. The summit's outcomes will help the government develop a framework to address key areas over the next four years, ensuring alignment with its priorities. Our average growth every year is around less than 3%, 2.5%, and then if we look at uh, our target law, NDS, by 2025, that is next year, we should grow our economy by 5%, and that one we by far, especially to reach those objectives, and so this summit is quite important, and the last yesterday and today is really something that uh, the government taking seriously in terms of our focus especially in the area of potential for growth, like the minister highlighted, like uh, forestry, mining, fishery, uh, tourism, and so this is quite important. As you know, that the uh, government is also uh, preparing for our graduation by 2027. I say something that uh, the inside of this summit source of help in terms of uh, need for our policies implementation and so on. And so after this, this is the next thing now, especially from the ministry, by column donor dialogue. And so this is number of events that going forward because we need to engage, especially to see how you may develop the roadmap that the is uh, outstanding so that you meet, meet the targets and also our preparation as the country prepare for graduates in 2027. The conclusion of the two-day summit will pave the way for a roadmap that will guide the country's policy and economic development. Finance Minister Manasse Songovare has clarified the challenges facing the mining industry in the Solomon Islands and its impact on the economy through tax and regulation. He emphasized that this is a critical issue requiring urgent attention. Uh, the first thing, of course, uh, we need to 
we need to uh, come up with a, a new mining law. The, the, the law that you got him, you got him right now. He's a kaike, very old Amosemia. So what a, what a, what a work on, on, on that uh, Amosemia. We do not have a specific taxation regime uh, for mining sector. We, we don't have that. All mining companies are taxed normally as any, any companies in Molokam today, yeah, MOSM, yeah? If they make a loss, you will not tax them what they know. And the way they are, uh, they are treating Molokam for tax purposes for this country, we uh, over the claim deductions for the front-loaded costs. Over the, and, and the, the front-loaded costs, they run to 20, 30 million US dollars, yeah? MOSM, yeah? We front-load that, we no any income yet, they re- over the return, income in, uh, return of income below that, they make a huge loss. And, we'll say, and that loss uh, could not take tax law of and, and carry it forever. And we'll say, so we do not, even though collecting many, any income tax from that. And we'll uh, then, of course, you may exempt him over the long uh, duties and, and, and goods tax because over the, over the, over the, it's not fair for what to pay him tax before what any man income. And we'll say, so for, for the reasons, you may exempt him over that. And hopefully we feel, uh, you know, the thinking here that goes in that when we even treat, even give more that special tax treatment within the next five years when they become come into commercial operations, that over the start will earn income, over the any more than over the exemptions in give order, that they, they will have uh, utilized their their, 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 loss, their losses and then over the even tax them over the course. But then look at them, let me know. <laughs> Uh, we know by no local sim, yeah? and so we're going to really look at seriously again. But raise specific issues that are raised here. Um, yes, you mean, uh, when I say you mean driving the sector, and we're driving it with all those reforms that I'm talking about to address those weaknesses. That must. So, we're not addressing this one. Mining company, mining industries, we will get very little out of it. A new report from the Asian Development Bank shows an increase in the number of women in business leadership roles in the Solomon Islands, but they still lag behind men. The Leadership Matters 2024 report tracks women's progress as board directors, chairs, deputy chairs and CEOs across 14 Pacific countries since 2021. Sarah Boxall, an expert from the initiative, noted that while women's representation has increased in the Solomon Islands, it remains mostly below regional averages. However, this growth is a positive sign towards more inclusive and diverse corporate cultures. The report highlights that the average proportion of women directors in the Pacific rose from 21% to 26% and women CEOs increased from 13% to 20%. In the Solomon Islands, women directors went from 11% to 21% and women CEOs from 7% to 24%. Despite these gains, men still dominate leadership positions. Nine out of 10 board chair roles are held by men and nearly half of the boards in the Solomon Islands have no women directors at all. The report emphasizes the need to continue striving for equal representation in leadership roles across the Pacific. The Solomon Islands government is urging the international community to provide tailored support for achieving the sustainable development goals, particularly for countries transitioning from least developed country status. Dr. Melekio Mataki, Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of National Planning and Development Coordination, highlighted the importance of preparing for the country's LDC graduation in 2027. This is a report here in, uh, in relation to graduation by me. The proposed graduation by me in 2027. This is a report here, and as well as including the review of the national development strategy, and really point to the need for us to enhance or redouble our efforts, so to speak for getting me myself prepared for, for that uh, gra- impending graduation. And the process plan now is that we, we are currently working on a smooth transition strategy. We are working with different uh, partners as well for come up with them that one. But from the Ministry of Planning uh, perspective, uh, we really need it, we need it for driving 
some key uh, infrastructure investment projects, eh? uh, developments, uh, country building strategic ones, which are really critical to to ensure that uh, you are uh, in a position to fare well uh, should we proceed ahead with the graduation in 2027. Uh, as you may say, uh, once you uh, graduate, by also losing no some for a preferential uh, treatment where what you say is according to law or the least developed countries eh, where we, we are a part of. Eh? A two-day film workshop organized by the Malaita and Native Lens Film Festival concluded yesterday. Participants were divided into groups and assigned to create short films which will be showcased during the film screening from August 13th to 15th in Aoki, Malaita Province. Malaita youth participants are eagerly participating the chance to showcase their creative work and stories. For something like this, I got a lot of interest for them. I got a lot of interest for them that I did a film or something. So I got a lot of interest for that particular project. But also for anyone for guiding me to that role, kind for guiding me to for how to do it, I'm supposed to be also kind of some fellow that knows how to and that knows how to some guidance type. So I got a lot of something like talent now, so especially for indigenous education. So for something where you me or the parents blame or go through, but next generation come. I mean, so what about save to or no more? Something was so Pablo film, but we can say where we have a travel dream. He must have been because time we make a film, then upload him by him stay in a hard film out. So it's time generation him come, but watch him, watch him go go. But so, oh, this one him what where me originate from now. This is a culture. Okay, so this is a workshop. Him, this is a come for learn him now. How for make a movie? This is a film. Him, this is a like for make him now. Him, but him go back base. Let this team where him indigenous education where by him stories blow. Like each youth come up with him stories where him base mainly lot of cultures or him depend much law how you can like for choose him now this are some fellow stories where I'm going back to this team indigenous education okay I'm good for um youth where yeah you happen for looking this one uh, me just encouraging you for if any workshops or training or same him 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 here lot places blue uh him good for you come and attend him a partnership between the Mala Itolo Indigenous Guardianship Trust and the Native Lens Film Festival in Malaita marks a first-of-its-kind achievement and a significant milestone for provincial screenings. In terms of delivery law program for Mala Itolo Law Malaita, we will use other uh, means and not platforms to we will deliver them programs. Uh, example now, say we will use Mokata schools where we will provide him uh, training where him relate to English learning law or among our schools targeting Mokata form fives and not form four students. And at the same time, we will use to other communities where Mokata, we will use Mokata technical people where they have a little bit advanced knowledge law or engineers uh, knowledge and skills for the providing more the engineers learning law or the communities. Uh, whilst we were doing that, we were also realizing that other audience too got the need for uh, learn to look at other means. So we were using film also most of one for opportunity where we were have a target him now, but those were okay the current interest for learn through film. Me still have a little bit learn to through law this while a training program where I'm preparing the last uh, three uh, days uh, where me realizing now how important now video and uh, films law or okay, the areas where you need for mess, provide a message law people uh, so we encourage him uh, uh, people especially or publics around normalita for i mean exploring film or some another way of promoting uh, ideas and or certain aspects where i'm related to society blowing me mr lagi is championing a campaign for the baby box initiative aimed at reducing abortion rates and promoting awareness about the value of human life. 
The initiative also offers advice and counselling to young people on marriage and responsible parenting. Jane Zaniela Swakai shares her insights on why she is highlighting this important cause. As you see here, this is the box, the baby box, uh, the baby box where you can put your babies in, in anonymously or not. This is the box. I believe that this box is such a great deal because it provides the babies a second chance that they need. But what I have in mind, what I want to see that we haven't put action to it, but we will in the future, I want to, is to get recognition from the government and the people, of course, to make sure that we put policies out there. We set policies yeah? to penalize, yeah? Because abortion is illegal, but it's not, it's not taken seriously. And I want it to, take, to be taken seriously. That is why I'm standing for it. The well, goal is to put it out there in our school syllabus yeah? so that we can learn about it, especially in healthcare, in schools. Maybe we can put it in the syllabus where the students, teenagers, female and male as well, to learn about abortion, pregnancy, and any things any sort of things that leads to child neglect and yeah I want to put it up and also at the same time I want to see less abortion yeah? I want to raise awareness so that people can know that there is a safe heaven you, there's another option there's another option other than abortion you don't have to kill your babies you don't have to throw out your babies baby box provides you a safe heaven where you can come and leave your babies there if you don't want your babies that that also motivates me yeah? looking at babies at innocent babies women they don't deserve to be treated like this they, they did nothing to us yeah and also one of one success story about the baby box now is there's one one of the cases as well the mother, the mother didn't want the baby but now the baby is the, do the documents are still pending, but the baby is now growing, learning, and yeah, running around. And I'm a baby folk overseas with them, adopted parents. And then, yeah. It's really good seeing our babies. We need to get them the, the chance, the life they need. Yeah. The babies, they deserve a second chance of life. And also for the mothers, because I believe that there are some mothers that they didn't they didn't choose to be in this situation. They don't want to leave their babies away, but they are forced to probably by pressure from family or marital affairs or whatsoever. I believe that they deserve a second chance as well, as well as the babies. Yeah?